Shalom, shalom to those far and near. Shalom, shalom to all who are here. Shalom, 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 everyone. I'm Bonnie Moore, and God has good news for you. And we're going to share it today right from his wonderful, omnipotent word. Everyone say, wow, what a word. And today we're going to be talking about another one of God's wonderful covenant names, his promise signed in his name. So let's get right to today's teaching. I'm going to share screen and we're going to learn more wonderful words and promises that God has for you. But let's open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to God's word. Open my ears that I may hear. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my heart, O oh Lord, to hear your voice. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Your servant I will be. To do your will is my delight. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Your servant I will be. For to do your will, O Lord, is my delight. And his will, we know from his word, is a delight. What a beautiful life he has planned for each one of us. And today we continue our life lessons in the series, Because You Know My Name, which is a quote from Psalm 91, the Psalm of Perfect Protection of the Secret Place of the Most High, where the Lord tells us that because we know his name, he protects us and lifts us up inaccessibly high, as in a fortress from the enemy. There's no snatching out of his hand. So we want to know his name. And we've already covered 10 of his wonderful names. And which is the best name? The one you need at the moment. So whether you need healing or deliverance or a shelter or protection, whatever it is. So containing his covenant promises. So each one is a magnificent promise signed in his covenant name. And that's the first name we studied was Yahweh, or you could say Yahweh. So depending where you put the vowels, sometimes they say Yehova, putting the Adonai vowels on yud heh vav -Hey, but it means I am, I was, and I will be. And Elohim we study, the God of the Trinity, the creation, the Lord our righteousness, putting all our sins on Jesus and making us righteous with God's own righteousness. The Lord your healer, oh Yahweh Rofeka, the Lord who sees ahead and provides Yahweh Yireh, the Lord, my helper, Yahweh is free, and El Shaddai, oh, that's the God that's more than enough, and the Lord of hosts, the angelic army, and the Lord is peace, shalom, wholeness in every area of your life, and the Lord, my shepherd, was what we studied last time. Now, this time, we're going to look at one of the most comforting names of God. The Lord is there. Wherever you are, he's there with you. Right now, where you are, he's there with you. And the promise of his abiding presence. 
He is with us wherever we are. He formed you in your mother's womb. He knows everything about you. It even has the hairs of your head counted. And he will never leave you or forsake you. That's from Hebrews 13, 5. And think about this. You're very unique. God planned you from eternity to eternity. And you have your own DNA, your own fingerprints, the own, your own iris of your eye. No one else ever from the beginning to one time, as we know it will end, will ever have your same exact DNA, your same exact fingerprints, are the same iris of their eye. It identifies you as unique. And that's the way God sees you. He sees you as a champion. And he sees you as a conqueror. And he sees all the great plan that he has for you from the time you were formed in your mother's womb. Now, this is because you know my name, Yahweh Shammah. And we see here, actually, there's a Degesh and the Mem doubling it. So it's Shah, two Mems, ah, Shama. The Lord is there. And the first time we see this, this is said in the Bible, this wondrous name is the end of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The city shall be 18,000 kibbutz around about. And the name of the city from that day shall be, the Lord is there. Yahweh Shema. And this was a vision of returning from exile and finding again God with them and a prosperous place. But it's fulfilled, actually, uh, in the Feast of Tabernacles, as you call it, but at the end of time when God comes and the heavenly city joins with the earth. But we'll see also it's fulfilled in Jesus that God came and took flesh among us. So again, let's see from Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Again, I say to you that if two or three, uh, you know, if two of you agree on earth about anything, they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven, for where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. And uh, we're gathered here now. He's not only here in our midst, but in all believers, he's in you also. Now, yeah, by his Holy Spirit. Now, Yahweh Shama, the great I am, I was, and I am to come, is there with you. And the word um, in Hebrew that means there, if you go to Israel and you ask where something is, they often say uh, Sham. It means it's over there. And the word for the, the word name is Shem. It's the exact same two letters, but the vowel sound is different. Shem and Sham. So there is Sham, the name is Shem. What does that tell you? I am there in your midst by his name. So what we're going to see is he's with us. And throughout the Bible, you're going to see from the beginning to the end, his desire is to be with us. What is we read in the book of James, draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. And we read in Deuteronomy, for what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God? Whenever we call on him, he tells us in Jeremiah 33, 3, call on me. I'll answer you, tell you great and mighty things you couldn't know. I know that's true. I ask him a question, he answers me with great and mighty things I couldn't know. I'm just so excited whenever he says, Bonnie, I want to talk to you. Oh, I run and get my pen and my tablet, and wow, I'm ready. I'm ready to hear what he has to say. It's always something marvelous. Now, Yamit Weishama, as we said, was uh, revealed to the prophet Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel is um, means God will strengthen. So, Isaac and El. So, Yahweh Shema was the assurance to those in exile. And, you know, it says we're really in exile in the earth right now from when God becomes the ruler. And we know and we rule and reign with them now that the Lord was still there for them and would bring them back. And that's our assurance too. And what did the Lord tell them? For I know the plans that I have for you. And he's telling this to you. Plans for welfare, prosperity, peace, shalom, the whole pie, good relationships, everything, wisdom, you know, good health, good finances, and shalom. And not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Tikva, tikva, that red cord that pulls us behind the veil. The, uh, tikva is the word for hope, but it also means cord was the red cord that Rahab hung on the wind. Then you will call upon me and come to pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me right there with you. When you search for me, all your heart, I will be found by you 
declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes. Seeking him comes with a reward. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. And that's from Hebrews 11. It's also, you know, when you seek him, he rewards you, you know. But we see so clearly in Jesus that promise of his presence. And Jesus wouldn't leave his orphans. He gave us the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, to be ever at our side, to be ever there with us, to instruct us, to lead us, to direct us, to correct us, to perfect us. And But just think about the amazing fulfillment of the promises of his presence. When the grieving disciples thought they'd lost Jesus, he died on the cross, been buried, and they wouldn't see him again. They ignored that he said he'd rise on the third day. And suddenly he stood in their midst and he said, Shalom. And that's what God says to you now. It doesn't matter if you've run away from him, if you've forsaken him, if you come back now, shalom. And our Lord often tells us, do not fear, I'm with you. Well, the spirit of fear is not from God. He, he gave us the Holy Spirit, and that is power, strength, and sound mind, you know. So you need to speak to that spirit of fear. Say, no, you don't belong to me, and I refuse to have you enter me. I will not fear, for God has given me not a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind. And you need to rebuke it and tell it to go. You need to control your thoughts by rebuking the ones that are false and telling them to go and worshiping God. So don't fear, for I have redeemed you, I've called you by name, you're mine. When you pass the waters, those troubles sometimes, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they'll not overflow you. When you walk through fire, you'll not be scorched, nor will the flames burn you, for I am the Lord your God. And why is he doing this for you? Because we're precious in his sight. We're honored and he loves us. Isn't that beautiful? He loves us. Uh, you have to know that his love is unconditional. He's, he's like the prodigal son's father. He sent his son to die for your sins so that you can come back and be whole with him. Now, he, he always thinks, like even with Abram, don't fear, Abram, I'm a shield to you. Your reward will be very great. Seek him, the reward. And what did he tell Joshua? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. And he was facing the enemy. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, if you're in fear or you're in doubt, you've forgotten who God is. He's the most high. And you're with him. Wow. What do you have to be worried about? He's an unceasing source of supply. He is your solution and he is your answer. And from, right, look at his names. The answer everything. Now, from the beginning of creation, we see God constantly wanting to walk with us, dwell with us, talk with us. He did it every evening with the first man and woman when it was breezy time of the day. He was training them, giving the word, but they withdrew from that fellowship and went with another master. But he still was looking to make a covenant so he could be again our God and could act on our behalf and could reach out through us to bless people and to bless us. He didn't want us under the curse that Adam and Eve had put us under by putting Satan as the God of this world. They had the dominion authority. They could give it to whoever they wanted, but they made a big mistake and they didn't repent. They blamed God. And I hope you're not doing that for your errors. And, but in a minute, open your heart to God and he come and make covenant with you and be your God and lead you. Like he did Joseph in Egypt. He was sold by his brothers as a slave, but we get that God, was with Joseph. So he became a successful and prosperous man. You know, if you don't forget who God is, everything's going to turn out well for you. You just have to remember who he is when you're in a trial or in trouble. Joseph remembered and he went through prison. He went through, you know, he went through slavery, prison, but ended up in the palace. He just kept walking with God. And no matter what tried, people tried to do against him, that was not God's will. But he kept walking with God and not having rancor toward the people that did it. And pretty soon, he had a life of perfect peace. Where he, it could have been unpeaceful. He governed a, a nation as the, uh, under Pharaoh. But he fed them all in time of famine. He wrote the Hebrew alphabet. I mean, he was amazing. He was amazing. But they spent about 400 years in Egypt and then... Uh, they forgot Joseph and they made them slaves. So they started calling out to God. They remembered him. And what did he do right away when they called out? He came down to rescue them. And he worked through a man named Moses. He needs your dominion authority to work upon the earth. So he has to find somebody that will work with him and unleash his power. Now, 
what did he tell Moses? Moses said, I can't do that. I can't get like more than 2 million people out of slavery in Egypt. Who am I I'm on the backside of the desert? Well, what'd he answer? <laughs> Certainly I'll be with you. That was enough, more than enough. And he's with you. And he had a dream in his heart always to bring them out and to dwell among them. And he told that way back to Abraham, he'd bring them out rich, you know, with silver and gold and jewels. Why? Because even though they've been slaves, night before they left, they talked to their neighbors. And after 10 plagues, they said, take this stuff. God gave them favor. He gave them favor. He'll give you favor. And he'll give you clever ideas. You know, he told them, ask your neighbors. He'll tell you what to do, what business or what thing to do. And the Lord spoke to Moses and he said, when they got in the desert, they had all this riches and they were going to a place filled with abundance where he was going to give them the houses and give them the fields and give them the wells that they didn't build or dig or put together. And he said, I'm just going to give them to you. Well, what did they need all those riches for? Well, in the desert, he said, I want you to make a contribution and build me a dwelling place. So I can travel with you. It was mobile. You could fold it up. It was a tent, but you would never have known it when it was standing because it had gold boards, on, you know, boards covered in gold on silver pedestals, looked like walls inside around the Holy of Holies. It had, I mean, a solid gold lamp stand. Well, they contributed their stuff. He said, only those whose hearts moved them. Well, their hearts stirred. And they gave that stuff and they kept giving and giving. And finally, Moses said, enough already. And they still had so much. Can you imagine how they were laden with silver and gold? But um, let's pick, back up a little bit and look at Jacob. When he was going to uh, find, well, actually find a bride, but he was actually running from Esau in many ways. He came to a place called Luz and he had a dream where a ladder was going from heaven to earth. And the angels were going up and down it. And he said, you know, God is in this place. I didn't even know it. And he called it Bethel, house of God. And later, that became the Temple Mount, where uh, Solomon, Mount Moriah, would build a temple to God. It was called Hamakom, the place of rising. And this place, he put his name. And after that, when he gave Moses the tabernacle, that plan so dear to him, it took about nine months to build it, and they really uh, followed exactly the plan he gave them because he said it was the plan in heaven. And you'll see the tabernacle, we'll study that sometime, of Moses was the exact plan of salvation and the fulfillment of the, the uh, we call them feast days, Moedim, the appointed times that he gave, gave to Moses. And then um, he said there'd be a place, you know, he chose in Israel, in the land that they took that was the Canaanite land. And there he would put his name and they would build him a house because then he'd be stationary. And you know, it was in the tribe of Judah that he built that temple. And from the line of Judah would come Jesus, God dwelling among us. And he then would make us all temples of God, ourselves with his name upon us. The whole family is called by his name. It's Paul put it when he was praying for us that our eyes we would be enlightened to this and we would know the love of God. And then he gave them um, a word for blessing people. And we say that at the end of every Good News for You program, the blessing that he gave Moses for the priest, um, Aaron and his sons, to speak over the people. And he said it would put his name on them so he could bless them. Well, we have the name of Jesus and we have his name, God, because we're joint heirs and children of God, and he blesses us. And uh, when David was born and knew the covenant, his desire was to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, showing God's abiding presence with them. And through a miraculous appearing of an angel, he, uh, after the census, he, he, he found Hamakol. It was a place where Abraham had stood to offer Isaac, that um, great stone, you know, and it where uh, Jacob, I mean Isaac, had, where Jacob had seen the heavenly ladder, and this was Mount Moriah, and that is the Temple Mount, and the temple has been destroyed, but it Mount is still there. They they want to rebuild the third temple, and the Herald Jesus' return, and the um they they they, they abandoned the word. They sought idols. That temple was torn down. They were in Babylon, and Ezekiel gave them the vision that they were coming back. Yahweh Shema, the Lord is there. 
And many years later, when the word became flesh and dwelt among us and God was fulfilling the promise of his presence in Jesus, he went to that temple. And remember, he cleaned it out and they said, what, you know, the, the money changers and the, the animals. And they said, what is the sign of your authority? He said, I'm going to destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. And uh, he was talking about his body, which became, it was the temple of the Holy Spirit of his name. And now he poured that spirit out on us at the fulfillment of Pentecost. We each have the Holy Spirit who believe in his name in us. And don't you know that you're a temple of God and the spirit of God dwells right there in you. It's just wonderful. You're now that place that joins heaven and earth where the angels are descending and ascending through you. And uh, it's like you can join to that vast kingdom. Like right now, you're, you know, you can join on the internet and uh, take a class or whatever. It's not really in you, but it's in the cloud and God's a cloud of glory. So right in your heart, when you are a believer, you have the Holy Spirit and access to the whole heavenly kingdom, to the heavenly Zion. And you're seated there in spirit. And then we know at the end, the heavenly city will join with the earth and God will dwell among us and he shall be our God. And we have his name on our foreheads and uh, the glory lights that place and the lamb is the lamb. And he calls you there by name. So draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. And let's just look at the Hebrew letters. It's the shin, the mem, and the hey, but there's a double mem, remember the digesh, shama. So we've studied shin, it's for Shaddai, God is enough for your needs, source of all good, all good comes down from the Father of lights, every perfect gift, every good thing. And it's, it's um, that's where you put your hand, you know, when you raise it and the blessing you talk is in the shin or, you know, the three uh, flames. And that's numbers 300, that's the, because they use numbers for their the letters for the numbers. And it's a crown letter. And it was like three nails to the crown, yeah? Jesus is a sign of Jesus being king of kings and crowned. And Mem is the pictograph of living water. You'll see it even on the sapphire cave, the case where they went sapphire, where the uh, Hebrew slaves were the Mem. Living water representing the Holy Spirit. It's number is 40, so there's two 40s. And hey, five is the number of grace. You'd have a hey, grace upon grace. So what do we find there? Grace flowing. We find the should die and we find the grace and that's where God is and we add them up and reduce them to get the number seven so we have the 340 45 and we reduce it we keep adding it seven is the number of Shabbat that's perfect rest he is there repentance and rest you are and we've already come to Mount Zion the city of the living God because when he raised when Jesus died to sin we died to sin and when he raised him up in spirit, he raised us up and seated us with him on the seat of the throne of the Son of Man that God took back that Adam had given to Satan. And we're so happy to be seated with him, aren't we? God is there. And you know, it's time now to close. So we're going to go right to our precious prayer of salvation. And that is a logo that I made last year for Feast of Tabernacles. So Heavenly Father, Thank you for Jesus. He died for me. I believe you raised him from the dead. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me in the beautiful life you prepared for me in advance that I might enjoy it. And everybody say amen. And now we're going to sing the blessing that, um, you know, I can't do it real well, but you try. And uh, they put their hands in a triangle of thinking, you know, this is God the Trinity but this was a whole. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and give you his grace. The Lord smile upon you and give you shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson as much as I did. God bless you all and thank you for watching. God has good news for you and God is there with you. This is really only the beginning. I make all things new. Resurrection joy is there for all of you. I have promised you eternal life, and it is there for you in Jesus. You have only to receive him.